A subgaleal bleed is a more serious condition and the subgaleal or the subaponeurotic tissue space is a loose space and it's unrestricted so the bleeding can progress. Uh, the accumulation of blood is between the tough fibrous connective tissue called the galea aponeurotica and the periosteum of the newborn skull so it's in the loose connective tissue. The emissary veins which bridge this area can be broken during the delivery if there is a stretch and because it's a loose area and the veins are fairly big the bleed can be significant. The incidence of subgaleal bleed is 1 in 10,000 normal vaginal deliveries and it can be close to 60 in uh, 10,000 instrumental deliveries. So you can say half percentage of the I mean, uh, instrumental deliveries. The symptoms of a subgaleal hemorrhage include bruising on the skin, a fast heart rate due to the blood loss, tachycardia, low blood pressure, the skin may appear pale, there is drop in hemoglobin. The swelling on the head has a liquid-like movement or boggy swelling due to the internal bleeding. The swelling may also shift on repositioning the baby. Suppose the baby is lying on the right and the swelling is on the right side of the scalp. If you move the baby to the left, the swelling then shifts after a few minutes to the left. It's heavy because it's blood. In very large subgaleal bleeds, the baby may be hypotensive and develop DIC, which is due to consumption of the clotting factors by the blood loss and uh, the blood loss may continue and lead to shock sometimes even before it is diagnosed. In case of treatment, the ma main uh, stay is to recognize it accurately early on, correct the coagulopathy, transfuse the pack cells and maintain manage the shock. Once a baby tides over the acute phase, the outcome is good and the swelling resolves over a week to two, three weeks. If even if the baby is stable, monitor in the NICU and review the vital signs frequently, including the blood pressure and follow the hemoglobin. Remember that in an acute blood loss, the hemoglobin may not drop very quickly and uh, the compensation by the hemodilution is what causes it to drop after some time. So if you do the hemoglobin very soon and it's normal, don't lose your alertness. Just continue to monitor and repeat the hemoglobin. So this is a quick summary of uh, all the three aspects of the scalp swelling. So caput, it's a subcutaneous and extra periosteal swelling. It's usually in the presenting part and can be associated with molding and it crosses the suture line. It resolves quickly even by two to three days, sometimes a week or two. A cephalomatoma is subperiosteal and it's fairly common, almost 2.5% of all live births. This is a result of rupture of superficial veins between the skull bone and the periosteal lining and it's confined by the suture lines. It resolves by eight to 12 weeks. There may be a risk of jaundice and skull fracture in 5% though you don't need to investigate unless you have serious concerns. A subgaleal bleed is between the subgaleal, the galea aponeurotica and the skull. The hemorrhage is secondary to trauma, usually following instrumental delivery. It can extend in the subgaleal space from the orbital ridge to the nape of the neck. And the jaundice, blood loss, shock and the risk of mortality as well. So I hope uh, this information is useful and please do share. Thank you.